Asbestos on your wire gauze usually distributes that uh, direct flame to your uh, to your beakers probably or flasks. Okay, so that's the use of this one for your direct fire to be distributed. Uh, it is not good for your fire to come in contact with your glass actually, even though it is Pyrex. Uh, sometimes you can use that one, but it's not really advisable. Because even though it's Pyrex, it really has some breaking point with it. So constant using that setup might endanger the glass and of course the experimenter. It might um, um, make that uh, Pyrex burst and then of course it will spill to the user. So usually when you use a Benson burner or probably an alcohol lamp, it should be coupled with this one. Or better use ceramic materials like uh, crucibles because crucibles are used for probably direct heating. Okay, but for your glasses, it must be backed up with wire gauze. That's why wire gauze is uh, also a general type of a laboratory tool. Next, we have, um, I think I've mentioned already this, reagent bottles. Uh, so, usually reagent bottles has glasses uh, as your stoppers or your covers. So, when you try to mix reagents and then the, the sample needs uh, uh, stated that you have to mix the substance in order for you to come up with a particular concentration percent or in volume percent, then after that, those are already called reagents, sample compounds you have mixed, you put it inside reagent bottles for probably later use or probably for uh, later observations. So that is the use of your reagent bottles. Uh, there are of course bigger sizes for this one. As you can see, you have a lot of um, different sizes for reagent, reagent bottles. As you can see, I've, I've used reagent bottles, bigger sizes like those at the top. There are, I've already used those types. There are smaller versions of rigid bottles, of course, if you're going to prepare lots and lots of mixtures inside your laboratory. Next would be vials. Uh, vials, this one is, I think this is a sample vial. Usually, uh, vials, different with your vials is because they are covered with um, a screws, a screwed uh, plastics like this one. This is a sample vial. Um... This is usually used if you're going to a part, uh, to a field and then you you get your sampling there. For example, water sample is so common in SSU Mercedes campus. So you'll be using vials to put your samples here. Just like this one, sample vial. As far as I've known, I've also seen here, I, I just can't locate uh, some vials which are transpa uh, dark vials. Sometimes they are used for uh, samples wherein it is not good for your sun to hit directly for that sample. Maybe it will change the property of that sample. That's why some vials are like that. They are dark materials, but they are also vials. Uh, especially when they are when they have uh, covers which are screwed. Okay, we call them vials. Uh, this one is sample vial. Another. Uh, another item here is I have a, a different kind of flask, somewhat a another version of your Florence or probably your boiling flask. This one is a some uh, we call this three three arm flask, three arm flask because it has three arms. So what's the use of this one? For example, you want to put a thermometer on this side, you can use a three arm flask, and then you have somewhat vapor. Uh, going up and then going to a condenser and then probably you have a let's say another chemical that you are pouring as the vaporing is I mean as the reaction there's a reaction happening as vapors is uh, is uh, evaporating from this side so you can use a 3 arm flask if ever there are lots of things that you are doing monitoring temperature probably or probably reacting species or substances so we use a three-arm flask, okay?